Good evening, and welcome to our midweek Lenten service here at Ascension Lutheran Church in Citrus Heights. If you are joining us tonight, we hope that you were even with us last Wednesday when for the first time we utilize Holden Village's Prayer Around the Cross. If this is your first time with us for this service, we hope that it'll begin to sound familiar to you. This is very similar to Holden Evening Prayer, which we have done before, um, just a slightly different, so hopefully the music <clears throat> will sound and feel familiar if it's your first time joining us for this service. Last week's service is available online if you'd like to um, enjoy that service as well as part of your Lenten practice. Why don't you join me in prayer? Timeless one, you renew your promises in every generation. Deep in our awareness of the communion of saints who have gone before us, the saints in our own time, and the saints who will carry on your message of grace even after us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A reading from 2 Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up into heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on, 
Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they were both standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Our gospel reading this evening comes from the gospel according to Mark chapter 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. Have you ever had deja vu? You know that feeling that you get when you have already been somewhere or experienced something that you are actually experiencing for the first time? Do you ever repeat yourself? Do you ever ask the, the same question more than once? Do you tell the same stories or jokes to the same group of people over and over again? Have you ever had deja vu? You know that feeling that you get when you have already been somewhere or have experienced something, but you know you're experiencing it for the first time? Our gospel reading this evening should sound very familiar. So don't worry. You're not experiencing deja vu all over again. And if it doesn't sound familiar to you, it probably should, so maybe you should worry. Because we read this gospel text a couple of weeks ago on Transfiguration Sunday. That Sunday when we read it, we, we read Luke's account, and tonight we read from Mark, but the story is essentially the same. James, or Jesus, Peter, James, and John share this pivotal mountaintop experience in Jesus' life and ministry in the company of Moses and Elijah, two of the most important saints from the Old Testament. 
Tonight we continue our midweek Lenten services as on our journey together to Jerusalem. We're focusing upon texts that remind us that we are in community, even when we can't be together. Last week we read about Jesus calming the storm, demonstrating his power over and relationship with all of creation. Tonight we are reminded that we are in community with all the saints, all of those people who have lived their lives faithfully before us, because our lives of faith are intertwined with theirs. Personally, the reason I grew up Lutheran is because my grandma was a Lutheran, and she was Lutheran because that was the state church in Sweden when she was growing up. So my life of faith has been impacted by hers, even though I, she died before while I was still quite young and I didn't get to know her that well. Now there have been others who I remember better than her who have had a significant impact upon my faith. In fact, just this past week, we were in Santa Cruz and I was reminded of our pastor from when we lived there. His name was Mike, and I was on the call committee when he came to serve our church there in Santa Cruz. And after we left, I, and I was discerning my call to ministry, Mike was one of the people that I talked with about this mountaintop moment in my life. And later, when we were discerning whether it was time to return to California and to the ELCA, I called Mike again. Unfortunately, Mike died before we moved back, so we haven't been able to get together like we had hoped, but he continues to have an impact upon both my faith journey and ministry. When Jesus went up the mountain, he brought his faithful friends, Peter, James, and John with him. They were in Jesus' inner circle, and if anything important was going to happen, they almost always seemed to be there. So it's not all that surprising that Jesus journeyed together with them up the mountain. However, just because they were around, that didn't seem significant enough for the, the event that was going to take place. So, so some others were invited, some saints, Moses and Elijah. After all, they were with the disciples. <clears throat> they needed verification. You see, G G Peter, James, and John were with the disciples last week in our reading when they had no faith in the boat. So now we needed somebody else to corroborate what was happening on the mountain, and Moses and Elijah seemed to be the perfect candidates for that. You see, they were <clears throat> two of the most or best known uh, figures from the Old Testament. And their appearance on the mountain, even though they couldn't give testimony to what they saw on the next day, their appearance there on the mountain gave credence to what was happening there upon the mountain. When the voice of God could be heard saying, this is my son, the beloved, listen to him. Now, <clears throat> their attendance there helped actually connect what was happening there with Jesus with what they had foretold in the Old Testament, and it provides a foundation of faith upon which Jesus built his ministry throughout his life. At the transfiguration, the faith of those who had already gone before was acknowledged as being the foundation or the forerunner of Jesus' ministry. It was because of them that Jesus was able to come and do what he did when he did it. Without their lives and their witness, we would not have been prepared, even ourselves, to journey together with Jesus today. Without them, without the disciples, and without the cloud of witnesses here at Ascension, we would not be gathered together this evening. The faith and the faithfulness of the saints who have gone before serves as a foundation for our faith. Sometimes in ways that we can see and witness, and other times in ways that are unknown to us. But without a community of the saints and their faithfulness, we might not have the technology to be able to be gathered in this virtual environment. And without the faith and faithfulness of people in your own lives, you might not have even bothered to log in this evening or turn on this service whenever it is you have chosen to do so. 
For you see, we are and always will be in community with those who have gone before us, for they have prepared the way, the way for our journey together with Jesus. So buen camino, my fellow pilgrims. I look forward to seeing you again along the way. Amen. Set aside a vessel with water in it as part of your Lenten journey. Now would be the time to have that handy. I apologize, I didn't remind you earlier in the worship service, but throughout Lent, every time we gather for worship, we will be remembering our baptism as we are invited to make the sign of the cross. For through baptism, God gave us a gracious sign of love and hope in Christ so here again, the promises God has made to us in Christ Jesus. Baptism is the sign and seal of God's promises to this covenant people. In baptism, God promises by grace alone to forgive our sins, to adopt us into the body of Christ, the church, to send the Holy Spirit daily to renew and cleanse us, and to resurrect us to eternal life. This promise is made visible in the water of baptism. For water cleanses, purifies, refreshes, sustains. Jesus Christ is living water. Through baptism, Christ calls us to new obedience, to love and trust God completely, to forsake the evil of the world, and to live a new and holy life. Yet when we fall into sin, we must not despair of God's mercy or continue in sin. For baptism is the sign and seal of God's eternal covenant of grace with us. I invite you to get your fingers wet in that water you've set aside, and then to take your wet fingers and trace the sign of the cross upon your forehead in remembrance of, the, of that same symbol that was made there at your baptism, when you were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. There is no God before you. Purify the faith of your church that your people place trust in nothing beside you. Your name is holy. Guide your church that in every situation your people's words and actions honor your name. heavens declare your glory renew your creation provide leaders in the struggle for clean air and water protect creatures and crops that rely on healthy ecosystems give all people the willingness to repent when our way of life pollutes the earth and skies So we ask your blessing upon our journey together. Give courage to all who lead in times of crisis and scarce resources. Prosper the work of those who aid victims of famine and drought and disease. Bring peace in places where scarce resources cause violence. cry to you, especially those who are hungry or without homes. Give life in places where death seems triumphant. Give healing to those who are sick and comfort to those who mourn. crucified. Give clarity to this congregation and our leaders so that we might follow Christ beyond our own habits and comfort. Clear out anything in our common life that would obscure the gospel or that serves our own interests.
The cross of Christ is your power for all who are being saved. Thank you for all who have gone before us, whose witness reveals the power of the cross. Give us the same trust in life and in death. We entrust ourselves and all of our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one with the Holy Spirit, let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I receive the blessing. May the creator who fashions us together with all things, the Christ who leads us into a new beloved community, the spirit who holds us in the communion of the saints, one God, bless you now and always. Amen. Go in peace, join together in Christ. Thanks be to God. God.